this is made for the off-road. So wanted to add just a little bit more flair here. Pick this setup to be able to handle like the mountain terrain that we have here, not only in the snow, but also to be able to go down to Southern Utah and be able to adventure around off-road. Well, California was fun and I, and in fact the roof pod, survived the corkscrew several times at Laguna Seca. But now we're in Utah at Park City, Hoonigan headquarters, and there's a lot of snow outside. It's very snowy and it's time for us to look at this. Wow. This is called, quite simply, the e-tron. And it doesn't roll out of the dealership looking like this, does it, Ken? You've done quite a lot of things to this already before we even get to the specs of what is under the hood. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously, Ken, you always raise the bar in terms of customization, design, and the look of a thing. So first of all, why does it look like this? It, this is stuff that can simply be done by bolt-on, right? That's one thing about living here in Utah. We're in the mountains. We need to go from the snow down to the desert. And I wanted to do this in very simple bolt-on ways that anyone could basically do. Of course, there is a very nice wrap on here. I like the flat color, a little bit of pattern compared to the GT, yeah. just to add a little bit of flair to it. I love the all, all white of what we did with the GT, but this is made for the off-road. So wanted to add just a little bit more flair here. Kept with the white theme but went with black wheels because we're going to be doing some off-roading. In general, this thing is built with multiple tire options to go from, you know, the deep snow all the way down to driving and having some fun down in Southern Utah in the desert. It's a, it's a very good setup. So we haven't quite put it all to the test yet. So that's, <laughs> that's why you're here, I think. You have to remember that Everything Audi makes that's electric now is called e-tron. All of the research and development, all of the stuff that's hidden under here that has grown out of sport. Like 10 years ago, the first e-tron prototype hybrid, the R18, was winning the Le Mans 24 hours. And then just in January, the RSQ e-tron was winning stages in the deserts of the Dakar. So e-tron is the central theme of everything that Audi makes that's electric. And this is like the mothership because it's just called the e-tron. Yeah, this is all their technology coming into one unit that can be used for everything. Of course, the GT is very specific to going even around tracks. <laughs> 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 I want to climb mountains. I want to go through the snow. I want to go through the desert. And that's the package that we've put together on this. It's something that my wife and my kids can use quite easily, but I can use, uh, you know, with the bike rack even to go down to somewhere like Moab and go mountain biking. So it's a, it's a quite complete package. Drive up the hills to ride down the hills. <laughs> yes. It can take 22 inch wheels, but we've gone for a smaller wheel, which is your signature Rotiform KB1s. Which is a six spoke design, race inspired style wheel. Um, still has like an area here on one spoke with my number on it and the Rotiform logo. And you can actually colorize it in that spoke, which is something that we like to do on some of the race cars. Why is it a smaller wheel? Well, because you want the bigger sidewall, uh, a sidewall that's gonna have some give on it and the ability to add pressure or reduce pressure depending on the sort of grip we're looking for. This is a very nice set of Toyota Open Country AT3s. So it's a good on-road tire along with a good pattern for the off-road also. So pick this setup to be able to handle like the mountain terrain that we have here, not only in the snow, but also to be able to go down to Southern Utah and be able to adventure around off-road. It is an SUV, we are in the mountains. So this sort of setup I think really fits this 
car with the performance that I want, but also a very good look too. And I do have one other option, hold on. So this is another option that, that we'll use up here for the serious winter when we are getting a lot of snow. Toyo Celsius tire, which is focused much more on just the all weather, all terrain, rain, snow. So a lot of siping in there, a lot of grooves to get the water and snow out. Incredible for traction in a mountain town like this on a car like this. You no longer have a huge heavy engine in the front. It's all under here. So the balance of the car is completely 50-50 front to back. We've talked a little bit about batteries and weight balance, but important things, power. Yeah. Power and torque. About 490 foot-pounds of torque. Pushing towards 500 horsepower, yeah. as I understand it. The powertrain pushes power to the back and to the front separately. So most of the time you'll never notice it, but it's actually in rear wheel drive. Mm. It activates front wheel drive when it needs it. Interesting that there's more exposed. electronics exposed for this one, which is nice. Well, you can put your briefcase in there. Because <laughs> of course I carry a briefcase. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like this. I like the fact that you can see some of the workings. The, the brains of the car is speaking to the suspension and the drivetrain. I like mm. it. I like it a lot. And that means that the expense of much room in the front, you're only going to put the charger or indeed my briefcase in there. <laughs> <laughs> What I like about it, the, the shape of it isn't too flashy. It's quite subdued and subtle. It's already wide here, so they haven't added extra wide wheel arches or adjustable ride heights for different terrain. And you've, you've added something here at the back. Uh, <laughs> well, it's a spare tire, Neil. <laughs> of course, you burn, through, you burn through tires, so you, you might need at least one. I think that the real bonus here is just so that we could have a, a, a table for charcuterie. <laughs> It's a nice setup. Perfect. And my wife will fill these up full of wine. <laughs> <laughs> what are you showing us here, Neil? And if you need to, you know, charge it up, because it has a range of about 222 miles anyway, yep. that's quite cool, that little... Uh... Yeah, it's one of my kids' favorite features of the entire car, oddly enough. The good thing is there's one on the other side as well, Neil. Ah. <laughs> I could just do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we needed a rack, and it's very nice that this is a Audi part that you can buy through the parts department to be able to add additional luggage for camping. You know, if we're going down to Moab to go biking, that sort of thing, we have enough space to take more luggage or more stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a very nice setup here with interchangeable parts to be able to put on different components, mm -hmm. like the bike rack. Okay, let's stop talking about this thing. Let's go drive this thing. Yes, please. Where'd you say you wanted to go? Well, I hear there's a couple of Banksies in Park City, and as a Bristol boy, uh, I love his stuff, so I'd like to see them. Yeah, well, he actually came here and premiered uh, Exit to the Gift Shop years ago at the Sundance Film Festival, so he painted two pieces in the middle of downtown. So, yeah, good excuse to go drive this thing over to downtown, look at some Banksies. Got it. Perfect. Well, I don't think there's a Banksy setting. <laughs> <laughs> it did snow last night, so we could go off-road. Probably just all-road is probably the preferred setting right now. Okay. But yeah, you really want to do that? Yeah, when in Rome. All right. I think it's a good idea, <laughs> actually. Main Street, a home of Sundance Film Festival. It used to happen over at the Sundance Ski Resort, but it got too big. Years ago, Banksy was releasing uh, Exits to the Gift Shop, it premiered in the festival. Mm -hmm. So he came in a couple weeks early, painted these two pieces. Uh, did anyone know he was doing it? Like, did he manage to do his usual stealth thing and get in and out? You know, I'm sure there were certain people that may have known, but like to someone like myself, I'm like, not in the know on something like that. It was very interesting to all of a sudden like it come out in the news that we have these two Banksy pieces now in Park City. So here's the first one. Very simple, very obvious. 
you know, which is the filmer pulling a, a you know a flower out of the ground. Right. Nice. Anyway, that's number one. Wow, cool. Now you've seen it. Life goes tick. But that's the real obvious one. That's the one right basically off Main Street. So now we'll go look at the other one that's a little further off. It's close to Main Street. The other one's more like Do you have to find it? A hundred feet away. So here it is, Neil. Banksy number two. I love it. And again, it's been protected. I understand like the city or whoever owns this building, they want to protect it, they want to keep it around. I grew up in Bristol where he started out putting street art and graffiti before he got famous. So I've seen a lot of his early work as well. Now you've worked with a lot of artists uh -huh. that go by other names. So I presume, I presume you know who Banksy is then? Of course, I'm in the Illuminati with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know who Banksy is. <laughs> I know of Banksy, I don't know a Banksy. Damn it. Sorry. Thanks for showing me this, I'm gonna get a selfie. Follow your own marks. Leave only footprints. Ha <laughs> 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 <laughs>